Merry Meet. Welcome to Witch Magic. I'm Dawn, and I will be taking you on a spiritual journey to all things magic and witchcrafts. Hello, everyone. Yay, I'm glad you made it to my second episode. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If you are new here, thanks for joining me. So I had a hard time figuring out this podcast thing. What do I record on? Who do I submit it to? And how do I get published to the major platforms? Ugh, it took me some time, but I finally figured it out. And here we are. Um, right now, I am on Apple Podcast, Amazon Play, and Google Podcast. So very exciting. I am very excited about that. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that I figured it all out and it's in working mode and you guys are here. So, all right, enough rambling. Uh, let me jump, let me jump off my soapbox here. The first thing I want to do before we start this episode is I want to give a shout out to, um, some of my first listeners and some of the first people that had joined my Facebook group and I want to give a shout out to Chris, Juliet, and Darcy. Um, that's my boyfriend and my two daughters, respectively. Tara, Carolina, Carolyn, Irene, Crystal, and my mom. All right. Thank you so much for being my first listeners, my first supporters. I hope you like what you're hearing so far, and I hope you continue to listen. All right. So anyway... Let's talk about books, the witches read, and setting up your altar. Bide within the law you must, in perfect love and perfect trust. Live you must and let to live, fairly take and fairly give. For tread the circle thrice about, to keep unwelcome spirits out. To bind the spell well every time, let the spell be said in rhyme. Light of eye and soft of touch, speak you little, listen much. Honor the old ones in deed and name, let love and light be our guides again. Do you also go by the waxing moon, chanting out the joyful tune? Wittishins go when the moon doth wane, and the werewolf howls by the dread wolf's bane. When the lady's moon is new, kiss the hand to her times two. When the moon rides at her peak, then your heart's desire seek. Heed the north wind's mighty gale, lock the door and trim the sail. When the wind blows from the east, expect the new and set the feast. When the wind comes from the south, love will kiss you on the mouth. When the wind whispers from the west, all hearts will find peace and rest. Nine woods in the cauldron go, burn them fast and burn them slow. Birch in the fire goes to represent what the lady knows. Oak in the forest towers with might, in the fire it brings the gods insight. Rowan is a tree of power, causing life and magic to flower. Willows at the waterside stand ready to help us to the summerland. Hawthorne is burned to purify and to draw fairy to your eye. Hazel, the tree of wisdom and learning, adds its strength to the bright fire burning. White are the flowers of apple tree that brings us fruits of fertility. Grapes grow upon the vine, giving us both joy and wine. Fir does mark the evergreen to represent immortality seen. Elder is the lady's tree Burn it not, or cursed you'll be. Four times the major sabbats mark in the light and in the dark. As the old year starts to wane, the new begins, it's now Samhain. When the time for in bulk shows, watch for flowers through the snows. When the wheel begins to turn, soon the Beltane fires will burn. As the wheel turns to llamas, night power is brought to magic right. Four times the minor sabbats Fall used the sun to mark them all. 
When the wheel has turned to Yule, light the log the horned one rules. In the spring, when night equals day, time for Ostara to come our way. When the sun has reached its height, time for oak and holly to fight. Harvesting comes to one and all when the autumn equinox does fall. Heed the flower, bush, and tree. By the lady, blessed you'll be. Where the rippling waters go, cast a stone, the truth you'll know. When you have and hold in need, hearken not to others' greed. With a fool no season spend, or be counted as his friend. Merry meet and merry part, bright the cheeks and warm the heart. Mind the threefold laws you should, three times bad and three times good. When misfortune is a now, wear the star upon your brow. Be true in love, this you must do unless your love is false to you. These eight words the reed fulfill, and ye harm none, do what you will. So that, my friends, is the witch's reed, also known as the Wiccan reed. And that is a long version of it. There are more shorter versions, just so you know. And you can find these different versions in different books or even around the web. Um, so what does it all mean? So as I told you, it's known as the Wiccan Reed. Um, whether you're Wiccan or not, well, if you're not Wiccan, you might not agree with everything that is said here. If you are Wiccan, this is pretty much the creed that you follow. Um, so I can break it down for you a little bit. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory, but um, let me just go over what might be a little confusing. So <clears throat> when it says, let the spell be said in rhyme. So I myself like to write spells that are in rhyme, um, but it's really not necessary in my opinion. As long as you're clear about your attentions, there's no need to rhyme. So I just like to rhyme just because it sounds good. Um, but again, it's really not necessary. And you know, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to be a poet or anything to write a, to write a spell, you know, so don't stress out about that. You know what I mean? Um, there's no need for that. Um, again, just as long as your intentions are clear as to what you want, and you will be fine. All right. Um, so let's see. <clears throat> the word Wittershins means counterclockwise. Simple as that. Okay. Summerland is like heaven to some people. Um, many magical people believe that's where we go when we die. I myself feel we feel that we all go to the same place regardless of what you call it. Um, so you can give me your thoughts on that if you'd like. You know, I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. This read also lists the different Sabbaths, which we will discuss in a later episode. Um, so be on the lookout for that. That's exciting. I always love that kind of thing. I love talking about the Sabbaths. It's really cool. So the threefold law is a belief that what you cast out will come back to you three times as bad or three times as good. So here's the old saying, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, I believe in such a way that if you cast a spell to harm someone, karma just might come back and bite you on the ass. But if your intentions are good, which hopefully they are, you know, then good things will come your way. Which kind of goes with the last line of the read. And ye harm none, do what ye will. I strongly agree with that. I would never do anything to harm another. Um, you know, I only want what's good for people. I only try to do good for people with their permission as well. Um, so that is the full version of the read. And I will also post it on the Facebook group after this episode airs so that you guys can see it. And there you go. I'll make sure to fill out that whole thing that I just read to you. All right. All right. So now let's talk about books. I love reading. I hope you guys like reading too. 
And my favorite things to read these days um, is all about witchcraft and, you know, I love to read stuff about astrology and numerology. Um, I like to get new spell books, you know, everything, stuff about the moon. I just love it all. Um, so anyway, there are many great books out there that you can read on the subject or on any of these subjects, but I just want to list the first books that I read that helped me out as a beginner. So in my last episode, I mentioned the book, Be a Goddess by Francesca de Grandis. Um, that is a great beginner's book. And if you listen to my last episode, um, I did mention that that was my very first book that I read and that I did all the activities. So I believe it was a 15 week book where you had to read um, a chapter every week, once a week, which was hard for me, and um, do the activity. So um, that's what I did when I had that book. And it was amazing. I just loved it. It was really good. So other great beginner books are Practical Candle Burning Rituals by Raymond Bucklin, Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham, and Green Witch craft by Ann Mora. So there are great books for beginners. There's lots of great books. Um, these are also good books to check back with and re-familiarize re yourself, excuse me, um, with the things in the book, especially like the candle burning rituals. That's always a great reference book to go back and you know, they mention like the color correspondences and everything like that. And we will go over more of that at a later episode as well. So I will do another episode all about books and, and we'll talk more about different books. Um, I'll have like a whole list of other books that I've read, that I've liked, um, everything, books on magic. We'll talk about that at a later date. So another good book to have is your book of shadows. So what is that? So a book of shadows is pretty much your journal. Okay. So in your book of shadows, you might want to write down um, some spells that you've written, some spells that you found that um, you want to try, some spells that you've maybe have done that have, have worked and you want to keep track of it. Um, you also might want to, you know, put stuff like thoughts on how your spells worked, pictures of gods and goddesses, references of colors, herbs and crystals, basically anything you want. Make it fun, make it special for you. Now, my suggestion is to use a binder, a three ring binder so that you can rearrange your pages whenever you need to. So like if you want to, um, you know, section off, I'm like a big organizer person. I have OCD, so, you know, I love to be organized. So having a binder really helps me because, you know, I have everything separated. You know, I have my spells and I have my, my color correspondences and my gods and goddesses and, you know, um, the moon phases and, herbs and everything like that. I have them all sectioned off. So if I need to add something or take it out, you know, getting those plastic inserts really helps out a lot because you don't have to put holes in your paper for one thing. You know, you can just use the inserts, go right into the rings of the binder. Um, and like I said, if you, you know, you can rearrange stuff nice and easy instead of like, if you have like a notebook and you're writing stuff down, and then say you want to add something and you don't have enough room and you have to put it in a different part of your book, it's hard, you know, it gets hard to find. And I know that there are a lot of really great looking um, journals out there with like pentagrams on the front of them and all that kind of stuff. They make really cool looking book of shadows, but it's your preference, you know, whatever you decide um, works best for you. And, that, and, and that's the idea. This has to be something that you find is going to work for you so that you don't get discouraged. That's the whole point, 
You know, you don't want to get discouraged. Um, you don't want to think to yourself, oh my gosh, there's just so many things I need to know, need to remember. No, keep a book and you can have everything right on hand, you know, and like I said, do what works best for you. You know, that's, that's the thing. And I know I'm rambling on again. Here I go. And I'm so sorry about that, but I can't, <clears throat> I can't, um, say that enough is just make it unique to you, you know, and it's going to be easy for you. So another thing, um, you can choose to do your spell work or rituals at an altar if you have the space for it. You can add things such as candles to represent the gods and goddesses, um, and you and your recipient, you know, whatever colors, um, cause they do have, you know, everybody has a certain birth color. You have a primary birth color and you have a secondary birth color. And again, when we go into color correspondences at a later episode, we'll talk more about that. Um, other things for your altar, um, you can have items to represent the four elements, um, incense, a mortar and pestily for crushing and mixing herbs, a little bell, your cauldron, your wand, your athame or ritual knife, and anything else you need for a spell or ritual. Have your witch's broom ready for marking your protective circle, um, as well as some sea salts. And it's a good idea to have an offering ready. And it doesn't have to be wines and cakes like a lot of books recommend, but you can do something simple like juice and a cookie, especially if you have kids working with you. Like my my kids, when they were younger, they used to love doing like rituals, especially around the Sabbaths with us. And if we did like a full circle thing um, where we had our protective circle and everything like that, they really loved, um, you know, sprinkling out the salt and everything like that. So, and then I'm not going to have wine because, you know, they, they're not going to let them drink the wine. So, but that that's up to you too. You might have different, if you're from like a different country that, you know, kids can drink the wine, that's fine. But juice is a is a fine thing, even milk, you know, anything. Anything could be an offering. You know, that's up to you, what you have on hand. You don't have to go buy special things just for that. Um, so if you don't have the space to keep an altar set up, you can always work out of like on your kitchen table, your desk, or any other place where you can burn candles and incense safely. I mean, hell, do a spell while you're in the bathtub. Take a bath, make a nice bulb of bath and have a candle and the incense and, you know, just do your, do a little simple spell. So you don't have to have all these tools that I mentioned, by the way. <clears throat> they're nice to have. They're symbolic, but they're really not necessary, um, especially if you don't have the space for them or you're in a position where you really can't display them. You know what I'm saying? Um, like if you have roommates that maybe not believe what you're doing and stuff like that, even though you could tell them to your blue in the face, I'm not doing anything evil. You know, some people are kind of, you know, a little iffy about it, but eh, whatever, right? <laughs> anyway, um, you can even do spells just by simply meditating. You know, if you can get a quiet place, you know, and just clear your mind and think of your intentions as to what you want. You know, you can just do a nice, simple meditation, you know, so you don't have to have all the tools. So if you don't have a magic wand, let's say, don't, don't think that you can't perform magic. You can, you really, really can. Okay. Believe me, you can. Um, so that is all I have for you today. Um, I'm trying not to make these episodes too long. I'm trying to go less than 30 minutes because I know even with myself, you know, sometimes you just don't have a whole lot of time throughout your day to just sit here and listen to somebody talking about stuff, right? <clears throat> um, so I do try to keep these nice and short, simple, straight to the point, but I want to I want to get your feedback. You know, what do you think of this podcast so far? What would you like to see here? What would you like to hear? Um I do have you know, I do have a schedule set up of things that 
I'm going to be discussing. And, um, but I would really love to hear your input. And if you'd like to support my show, um, really, all you really need to do is please leave me a five-star review on any of these platforms that you listen to this on. Um, tell your friends who'd be interested in following me. Um, join my Facebook group page. I have, if you go to my Podbean account, I have the links to my Facebook group and also my website, but I'll also put these in the show notes. And in these show notes, I'll also put the um, the names of the books that I mentioned. Um, so if you wanted to check those out, I'll put the names of the books and the authors so that you'll have that. All right. So until next time, I guess. So that's going to do it for today. I will be airing these podcasts about once a week. So be sure to tune in. You might want to choose to get notified when I air so that you don't miss a thing. If you have any comments, please feel free to connect with me on my Facebook group. I will leave the link to that along with my website on the show notes. Blessed be.